I think it smells like fried onions. <laughs> <laughs> or like deep fried onions. I mean, wild fermented wines really are they're the sourdough bread of winemaking. Mm -hmm. And fundamentally what it means at a technical level is just that we are using yeast that naturally lives in the vineyard and lives on the skins of the grapes to ferment the grape juice into wine, rather than like making your bread at home, taking dried yeast out of a packet and using that. Mm, okay, so how does that make it different in the end product? So it's hard to give a definitive answer because there are so many sort of um, contextual differences depending on the style that you're doing, but as a vast generalization, wild fermented wines tend to have uh, deeper flavor and more layers of flavor, whereas um, wines that are made uh, through yeast inoculations tend to be, um, as one expert put it, they tend to taste like they've got a straight jacket on. The flavor is a bit more one-dimensional and um, they don't quite have that range of different flavors. The poor wines are being locked in. They are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the crazy wines are being being controlled. Yes, yeah. yeah. So like, why are um, winemakers into using this right now? Into using wild fermented wines? Yeah. Um, they like it because um, it's part of a much wider movement towards um, a bit more hands-off, perhaps natural winemaking, uh, which for people who are really into that, it's fundamentally about making wines which are true to where they are from, instead of deciding that you want to make a white burgundy or an Italian style red. You're saying, we're going to make wine that tastes of this vineyard where I grew it. And so they want to reduce the amount of intervention that they're using in the winemaking process. And while ferments is just sort of one way of, uh, of doing that. So basically you take grapes, you put them in a tank, and, and that's it. That's it. Yes. <laughs> like that, that's all you have. Which to makes do. it sound like you don't really need a winemaker anymore, but um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could not be further from the truth. They yeah. they need a bit more um, attention, but less intervention is the idea there. Okay. So, uh, but really, what you're doing is just that. And, and um, the analogy again, if sourdough bread is it's a fantastic crossover. It's actually usually the same yeast um, that is fermenting your sourdough starter. That's also fermenting your wine, um, at least at the higher alcohol levels. And um, you usually pick some of the grapes earlier, you'll put those in a bucket, crush them and leave them somewhere up high in the cellar where it's a bit warmer. Let that get bubbling away for a few days, uh, by which point you've probably picked the rest of the vineyard, you've got it sitting in the tank, it will have settled out a little bit. Um, and you literally just throw that bucket in the top and um, that gets it started. So now, you have a starter basically. You have a starter, exactly. Okay. And, and as with sourdough um, breads, you know, it takes a lot longer for the bread to rise. Well, it takes longer for the wine to complete its ferment, but the potential advantage of that, especially if you have a strong, yeast pop strong native yeast population, is that you get so much more flavor and so many more varied flavors as a result. Mm -hmm.